come, you say you will when you won't. Oh, baby, do, baby, when you don't. Let me know, honey, how love feels. Here's the truth now, is love real? Honey, don't. Tom Remington, it's uh, Friday, Halloween Eve. Welcome to uh, uh, an episode of Open Air with Tom Remington. Hey, you know, yesterday we learned about uh, the uh, the very tragic and unfortunate uh, circumstances surrounding the young up-and-coming singer-songwriter, movie, um, not movie star, but star in Canada, the 19-year-old, I think, uh, Taylor Mitchell, um, who was out hiking by herself in Nova Scotia and was attacked by two coyotes and consequently died uh, as a result of the injuries from those attacks. And the interesting part of that, and, and uh, before I proceed, you know, my, my thoughts and prayers uh, and deepest sympathy go out to uh, Ms. Mitchell's uh, family and friends at this time. And, and uh, there's nothing that I can say that make them feel better, but i uh, just like to uh, acknowledge that. Um, you know, reading the, the articles about that incident um, comes back to the, to the same old discussion that, that I've had before, that we need to stop this uh, insistence on repeating the same thing over and over and over whenever a human being is attacked by an, another animal, whether it be a wolf, a bear, a coyote, uh, you know, what, uh, whatever the circumstances. And just stop saying, well, it's a rare thing and it's really unusual and, uh, you know, it almost never happens, you know, that, which is probably statistically accurate, but it does nothing to, you know, to educate the people as far as, you know, what can they do to reduce the, you know, the, the, the circumstances of or the odds or chances of, of them becoming a victim as well. You know, you can say, well, the odds are pretty slim that when I get in my car and drive down, you know, downtown that I'm not going to be killed. Well, that's true, but you learn how to drive defensively and that sort of thing. The interesting thing about this whole debate is that, you know, there are those who have done studies <clears throat> and have determined that there are steps, or if you will, that, you know, canines, and I'm talking wolves and coyotes, um, that actually, that there are, there are steps that these animals take that lead up to an attack on human beings. And I'm not sure, you know, I've, I've made a, a real effort on my blog, the Black Bear blog, to, uh, you know, get this information out, and, um, there's really two two major sources where this comes from, and both are very respected uh, people. One is uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Valerius Geist uh, in Canada, and uh, the other is Will Graves, uh, the author of the book uh, Wolves in Russia: Anxiety Through the Ages, where Graves spends you know his entire book you know researching. Uh, Oh, the history of wolves in Russia, and you know, learns a lot about the habits and that sort of stuff. And I, I don't have a lot of time, so I want to move right ahead. Um, <clears throat> Dr. Val Geis uh, sent me a long time ago um, an article that he had written about the the, the seven steps that wolves slash coyotes uh, take that lead up to an attack on a human. These are these are legitimate proven things and it's something you should heed uh, I'm not trying to put the fear of God in you but you know if you're gonna be in the outdoors or you know you've been in the outdoors and you've witnessed some of these things then you know then you know put it in your head that hey you know geez they've I've seen that what's the next step and you can find this on on the black bear blog you know just go Go there and uh, Google, you know, uh, Dr. Geist or Geist and scroll down through. You'll find this. Uh, the name of the whole article is When Do Wolves Become a 
problem to humans, but I want to briefly scan down through these seven steps to help you, um, you know, learn a little bit better about this, and then maybe, you know, we can, we can help avoid some of these attacks. Step number one, within the Pax territory, prey is becoming scarce, not only due to increased predation on native prey animals, but also by the prey evacuating home ranges en masse leading to a virtual absence of prey or wolves and when I say wolves you know you can substitute it for coyotes it is same bit or wolves increasingly visit garbage dumps at night uh, blah, blah, blah. okay step number two okay what they're saying is you know that uh, the the wolves or the coyotes basically eat themselves out of house and home and they move on they move someplace else Okay, two, uh, wolves, coyotes, in search of food, began to approach human habitations. So, you know, they've, they've eaten themselves out of house and home, they've moved on, so they, they begin to approach where people live. Okay, I'm not going to read all of it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, you know, briefly scan through this thing because I'm limited in time, obviously. Step three, the wolves appear in daylight. Uh, observe people doing their daily chores at some distance. So, so they, st you might look out and you see a, co a coyote or a wolf standing in, and they're watching you. Well, that's that's what they're doing. Step four: small-bodied livestock and pets are attacked close to buildings, even during the day. The wolves act distinctly bolder in these actions. So, you know, your pets might be dis you know disappearing, and and some of your smaller livestock, and. Uh, Whatnot. Step number five, the wolves explore large livestock, leading to uh, dock tails, slit ears, and hawks. Livestock may bolt through fences, running for the safety of barns. Uh, when the first seriously wounded cattle are found, they tend to have severe injuries to the udders, growing in sexual organs, and need to be put down. The action of wolves uh, become more brazen, and, ca on, and cattle or horses may be killed close to houses and barns with Okay, you get the picture here? They're, they're moving up, they're getting braver, they, they learn how to attack the bigger livestock. Okay, step number six. Wolves turn their attention to people and approach them closely, initially mer merely examining them closely for several minutes on end. This is a switch from establishing territory to targeting people as prey. The wolves uh, may make hesitant, almost playful acts, biting and tearing clothing, nipping at limbs and torso. They withdraw when confronted. They defend kills by moving toward people and growling and barking at them 10 to 20 paces away. You know, the important thing in, in this step is to, is to recognize that, that people will actually have witnessed this behavior and they interpret it wrong. They think the animals are friendly and want to play, and they're, they're not. They just they want to test the waters. Okay, moving right on. Step number seven: Wolves attack people. These initial attacks are clumsy, as the wolves have not yet learned how to take down the new prey efficiently. Persons attacked can often escape because of the clumsiness of the attacks. A mature, courageous man may beat off or strangulate an attacking wolf. However, against a wolf pack there is no defense and even two able and armed men may be killed. You know, and, and there's more information and I say just go over it, it'll help you to understand a little bit about the behavior that's here. But this is important. Again, I'm not trying to put the fear of God in you. It's something to understand. You know, that when you're out there and you encounter these, these uh, you know, wolves or coyotes and that sort of stuff, it helps to understand what process they're going through and you know it's easy to pass it off as oh you know they'll never bother me you know I'm not I'm not, they're, I'm in no interest to them as to, as a meal well I'm sorry you're wrong uh, you are it's just uh, you know you're not a common everyday prey that they're that they see all the time that they can eat so they have they get hungry um, or whatever the case may be, and they're going to size you up till they figure out how to bring you down if necessary. Hey, you go out and have yourself a nice day, and I hope this information's been good for you. And uh, I'm Tom Remington. See you next time on Open Air.